Thanks for joining us as we continue our coverage of the search and rescue operation from a sunken ferry off Korea Southwest. It's Monday, April 21st here in Seoul, and I'm Choi Yu Sun. It's been more than five full days now since Korea's worst ferry disaster in two decades, with search and rescue operations continuing through the day and into the night. Unfortunately, no survivors have been found uh, in the recent days, and the death toll continues to rise. We go live to our Hwang Sang-hee standing by at Pengmokang Harbor, which is just 20 kilometers from the accident scene. sang what's the latest from where you're at? Yusun, one more body has been retrieved just moments ago, um, raising the total confirmed death toll to 65. Now, the body has yet to be identified, but it is suspected to be a female high school student, and it was found on the fourth floor of the vessel. Now, the fourth floor is where the cabins are, and it's also where most of the students are believed to have been at the time of the accident. So the rescue teams are focusing their search on the third and fourth floors of the vessel. More than 200, uh, nearly 240 people still remain missing inside that sunken uh, vessel, and nearly 90 percent of that number is uh, from the Tanwan High School in Ansan. Family members of the missing took a boat ride to the site of the capsizing just a few hours ago, which really must have been a very heart-wrenching trip for them. Yusan? sang can you give us details of uh, progress made in the ongoing search and rescue operations now? Well, Yusan, divers will be working around the clock to speed up the rescue operations. In addition to the five guidelines already attached to the uh, sunken ship, another guideline has been added, which means they have secured another uh, route, new route into the uh, sunken vessel. More than 200 Coast Guard ships and Navy vessels, 13 fishing boats, 35 aircraft, and more than 500 divers have been deployed today. Now, two remotely controlled submersibles are searching inside the sunken ferry with the help of two U.S. experts. The weather conditions still seem favorable with clear skies, but the winds are getting stronger and tidal waves getting higher. So uh, I wish to bring you some good news. This has been Hwang Sang-hee reporting from Pengmokang Harbor. All right, thank you, Sang-hee. In the days that immediately followed the Sewolho ferry accident, search and rescue efforts were seriously hindered by fast-moving tidal currents. But thankfully, conditions are expected to improve this week, which should help divers navigate through treacherous waters near the sunken vessel. Our Park ji has more. Calm waves and clear skies. Wind speeds and wave heights were cut in half on Monday compared to the previous day as a high-pressure front moved into the area. Weather conditions have finally turned favorable for search and rescue crews in waters off Jindo Island, and the clear weather is forecast to continue through this Friday. Strong tidal currents, which significantly hampered the rescue operations last week, have also slowed. Last week was the time when the current speeds were the fastest, and from the 19th, it has been slowing down. Starting this Tuesday, the speeds will be at their slowest. Last week, the maximum speed of the currents in the area were 2.8 meters per second, or over 10 kilometers per hour. That's expected to drop as low as about 1 meter per second, especially from this Tuesday to Thursday. When tidal currents slow, underwater visibility improves with less floating particles in the sea. That's why experts believe this week will be a turning point in search operations inside the sunken Sewolho ferry. Park ji Arirang News. With many more clues emerging about what might have caused the Sewolho ferry to sink, the puzzle is slowly being put together. Our Kim Min-ji reports on the, the three knock-on factors that experts suspect caused the ferry to capsize. Around 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, April 16th, the Seoro Ferry passed through treacherous waters, which are notorious here in Korea for their strong currents. 18 minutes later, the ferry veers suddenly, which has been pointed to as the first factor in the sinking. 
What it means by the vessel supposedly making a P turn is that the helm was turned to the right, then back again. But the boat didn't come back to its original position. Operations momentarily froze, which results in the ferry making a complete turn. Due to centrifugal force, the vessel tilts to the left. Now this is when the second factor may have come in. Grips holding down on the ferry's freight may have come loose, causing containers and vehicles and the cargo compartment to lift sharply to one side. The weight concentrated on just one side of the ferry causes it to tilt even further. If the vessel had enough dynamic stability, the vessel could have bounced back to the other side and maintained balance. However, due to renovations to increase the vessel's capacity, the center of gravity on the ship had been raised from its original design. Due to the expansion of the ship, the upper structure has been changed, making the center of gravity much higher. If the center of gravity and buoyancy are far apart, the dynamic stability decreases. Experts say the reduced dynamic stability caused the vessel to completely submerge because it wasn't able to recover from the initial tilt. They add that the Seoro ferry may not have had enough ballast water, which maintains the balance of the vessel, in order to carry more cargo. As all three factors could have been prevented, experts say the sinking will likely be attributed to human error. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. President Bakune has spoken out in no uncertain terms about the captain and crew of the sunken Seolho ferry, saying their actions on the day the ship capsized were akin to murder. She also had something to say about public officials who have been criticized for their rescue efforts. Our Yurian has the details. <laughs> Likening the act to murder, President Park Geun-hye criticized the actions taken by the captain and his crew at the time of the accident during a meeting with senior secretaries on Monday. A communications log had revealed that the captain and crew members of the Seoro ferry had called on passengers to stay where they were during the time of the accident. President Park vowed to make sure justice is handed down. 저는 반드시 단계 단계별로 철저하게 규명해서 무책임과 부조리, 잘못된 부분에 대해서는 강력히 책임을 물을 것입니다. The captain and two other crew members are now charged with negligence of duty and violation of maritime law. President Park also had pointed words for public officials, some of whom have been facing criticism for inadequate efforts in rescue operations. 국민들이 공무원을 불신하고 책임 행정을 하지 못하고 있다는 비난을 받는다면 그 책무를 소홀히 하고 있는 것이고 그 자리에 있을 존재의 이유가 없는 것입니다. During the days following the accident, families of the victims grew furious at the government-related personnel and also the Coast Guard for making conflicting announcements on the number of victims and survivors. The families also expressed frustration that the numbers of rescue personnel dispatched to the site and the numbers announced by the government did not match up. Yurian, Arirang News. While the nation mourns and prays for some positive developments, there are those taking advantage of the horrible tragedy still unfolding in the southwest of the nation. Authorities are warning the Korean public not to be deceived by the latest text messaging scams. The science ministry said it has so far identified seven kinds of smishing scams using text messages that lure people into phishing sites that extract personal data. It warned people not to click on any links sent to their mobile phones and to immediately delete these messages since they could be embedded with malicious codes. The government and police also say they will hunt down and punish those who post false information on the Internet regarding the ferry accident. In light of the tragic accident that has put the whole nation in despair, the Education Ministry has uh, stepped in to prevent further accidents. And for details, we now go to our Na Young standing by at the News Center. Hyun Young? 
Yuzhan, the Ministry of Education has told the country's 17 metropolitan and provincial education offices not to take their students on a mass school trip, at least for the first half of this year. The decision was made at a meeting this Monday. Education officials also decided to temporarily postpone any training activities of students if safety measures are not properly in place. The ministry also plans to develop and distribute safety manuals to help schools safely guide their students when traveling by airplanes or water transportation. Pyongyang, fresh speculations are rising as uh, personnel from Tanwan High School claim to have received a phone call from the Jeju Coast Guard at around 8.10 a.m. of the day of the accident. Do you have any updates on that? Uh, yes, I do. Use on earlier in the day, the Gyeonggi-do Provincial Office of Education said a Tanwan High School's teacher received a call from the Jeju Coast Guard asking for a cell phone number of a teacher in charge of the field trip that brought more than 300 Tanwan High School students on board the Seolho ferry on the accident day. But Jeju Coast Guard officials are now saying that it was a local policeman who called Tanwan High School and not one of their officials. The caller, unaware of the fact that the ferry's arrival time had been delayed, went out to the port to guide the students and apparently called the school when he didn't see any ferry coming in. The initial call time was said to be 8.10 a.m., about 40 minutes before the sunken ferry is recorded to have first contacted the Marine Traffic Service at its destination, Jeju Island. But now, reports are saying that it was about 8.20 a.m., and more inv investigation is definitely needed to officially confirm the facts and details. So there's still a lot more investigating to be done regarding this case. Speaking of which, how is the investigation progressing? Well, the joint investigation team composed of the police and the prosecution earlier in the day received arrest warrants for four additional crew members. This comes after three crew members, including the captain, were arrested on Saturday on charges, including negligence of duty. Some 20 people related to the renovation uh, have been summoned. Renovation of the, sh uh, of the ferry, the Seolho ferry, that is have been summoned for questioning as well as reports come in that the 20-year-old ferry might have undergone months of renovation to overly extend its sailing life for more than seven years. Investigators are also said to have secured transcripts of SNS messages of some 400 passengers that were on board the ferry. They are currently being analyzed and I will bring you more updates on our later newscasts. Yusan. All right, Kyung Young, thank you for that. Now, getting back to the victims of this disaster, once bodies are recovered, or better yet, if survivors are found, they will be brought to the Mokpo Hanguk Hospital located in Korea's southern Jeollanamdo province. There, the hospital staff have been working around the clock. And for the latest, we turn to our Kim Hyun Bin standing by at the site. Hyun Bin? We seem to be having some technical um, issues here. We'll try to connect to our Hyunbin later on in the newscast. Bodies that are first transferred to Mokpo Hanguk Hospital are identified and then released to their families in Ansan. Uh, and we connect live to our Connie Kim, who's standing by at the Korea University Ansan Hospital, where many of the deceased have arrived. Connie, what's the latest? Right, Yusan. I'm currently standing by at the funeral hall of Ansan of Korea University Ansan Hospital. Now, a total of six of the deceased that we got from Mokpo still lie here, with five of them expected to be released to their families earlier tomorrow morning. Now, a joint memorial altar is expected to be set up at the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall for the Tanon High School students. So. Uh, starting from Wednesday, uh, parents and relatives will be able to pay their respects there. Now, parents of the deceased have delayed releasing their children after requesting an autopsy to find out the direct cause of the death. They want to know whether their children died from drowning or from hypothermia after waiting inside an air pocket in the vessel. This is critical in determining whether the government was fast enough with their rescue operations, and parents say they'll hold the government responsible if this was not the case. The bodies of eight victims from this tragedy were released to their families earlier today. And the city of Ansan continues to grieve for those it has lost so suddenly and so tragically. Connie, it has to be a traumatic time for everyone there. How, are, how about the students who survived this horrible ordeal? How are they holding up? 
Yes, currently there are 81 patients receiving medical treatment here in this hospital. And according to the director of the hospital, he says that most of the victims that were suffering from mental distress and depression have improved compared to when they first got here. But they will continue to monitor the students, saying that one out of four students are not sleeping well and that about 20% of them will need psychological therapy. After monitoring their status, the hospital will decide whether students can return to their daily lives within the next three days or so. A team composed of experts from the Welfare Education Ministries, the city of Ansan and Gyeonggi-do province will continue to look after them. This was Connie Kim reporting live from Korea University Ansan Hospital. The Sewol Ho Ferry tragedy has hit Tanwan High School especially hard as more than 300 of its students were on board the vessel when it capsized. The school will reopen its doors this week for sophomores and seniors who will be met with the help of professionals who will give them, uh, guide them through the most difficult moments of their lives. Our Kwon Zoa has this report. Despite still being in severe shock, students of the Tanwan High School in Ansan will be returning to their classrooms this week. Laughter and joy filled the ship when it departed on a school trip to Jeju Island, but now there are only tears left. The Seol Ho was carrying 325 students from Tanwan High School in their junior years. The school has temporarily closed twice since Wednesday, the day of the incident, but there were concerns from parents of sophomores and seniors who asked that students be able to return to their daily routines as soon as possible. The Gyeonggi Provincial Office of Education held a briefing Sunday and announced its plan to reopen the school this Thursday. When students return, the focus will be on helping the students cope with the traumatic events of the past several days. We will primarily progress with a therapy program to help the students recover from the mental shock and will gradually return to usual class schedules. There are currently around 100 doctors and therapists ready to help at the high school. The students of Tanon High School are also grieving over the death of their vice principal, who was rescued from the Sewol Ho Ferry but later committed suicide over apparent feelings of guilt. Experts worry that many students will be affected by post-traumatic stress disorder, which can occur even years after a shocking incident occurs. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Let's try connecting again to our Kim Yanbin standing by at the uh, Mokpo Hanguk Hospital. Uh, once bodies are recovered, or better yet, if survivors are found, this is where they will be sent to. Uh, this hospital is located in the southern part of the country. There, the hospital staff have been working around the clock. And for details, Hyunbin, uh, tell us more what's going on over there. Uh, hey, Yusan, uh, no bodies or survivors have arrived since I got here early this morning. And this hospital is one of the five that is processing the bodies for identification as well as uh, uh, DNA, uh, DNA sampling. And all the bodies were transferred to hospitals near their hometowns as of yesterday. A medical helicopter is on standby along with two medics so that the hospital can efficiently transport rescue survivors or the deceased. Uh, Mokpo Hangul Hospital officials say 50 beds have been reserved for any possible survivors that are found, and 20 doctors and nurses are on standby 24 7. Uh, as for the survivors, 31 were hospitalized here after the accident last week, and currently there are 11 still receiving treatment. Uh, since rescue operations are well into a sixth day now, Hopes of finding survivors are slowly dimming, and officials are expecting more bodies to be transferred here in the coming days. Back to you, Yusun. Hyunbin, as for the survivors rescued on the first day of the accident, they're being treated there. I heard they are experiencing severe depression and anxiety, and the hospital has forbid anyone from visiting them except for family members. How are they doing? Uh, not well, uh, doctors say. Uh, all the survivors are uh, suffering from post-traumatic stress, and uh, roughly half are t under medication, uh, which is a clear indication of the severity uh, of the uh, of their um, condition. And family members are also suffering from shock. Uh, one of the fathers of a missing student suffered a stroke, and some of the survivors are suffering from depression and even uh, amnesia. 
Uh, this has been Kim Hyun-bin reporting live on Mokpo Hangu Hospital, and I'll bring more updates uh, later on. All right, thank you, Hyun-bin, for that, and please do update us in our next newscast. The terrible loss of so many young souls has plunged the entire nation in deep sorrow and despair. In respect to the victims and the still missing, TV stations have canceled entertainment shows. Baseball and soccer matches are being played in silent stadiums, and the public have mass for candlelight vigils. Our Sami Sorang reports. An accident that has left so many in disbelief. People all over the country had their eyes and ears fixed on news of the ferry disaster. It was to share the weight of the tragic accident and console families who were told by their children that they love them and that they shouldn't worry. Weekend prime time. Laughter has faded from what would normally be a fierce entertainment competition between the major television networks. With one of Korea's favorite sports, baseball season in full swing, all the loudspeakers and cheerleaders have disappeared from the stadiums. All that is left is the players who solemnly play without any cheering or events. People in Korea are sharing the pain as if it is a loss of their own, something the country has experienced in times of need. I wanted to help in any way that I could, so I joined the candlelight vigil. I really hoped that with the whole country coming together, that a miracle will happen. During the 1997 Asian financial crisis, the Korean public donated their wedding rings and other gold items to help the country pull out of the economic crisis. And after one of the worst oil spills of the Taeyeon coast in 2007, the area was able to recover its nature after an endless number of volunteers helped clean up the spill. Regardless of whether it is for good or bad times, the nation has been able to come together, setting individual needs aside and sharing a spirit of unity. Korea has a strong collective sentiment. This is something that is just as important as collective intelligence. The entire country is sharing the sentiment that the students in the sinking are not simply children of other families, but actually part of an extended family. This is the force that brings the country together as one. Somi Sorang, Arirang News. Rescue operations on Jindo are picking up speed, largely due to improved weather conditions. And for details, we connect to our Kim Bogyang at the Weather Center. Bogyang. Well, you said it's a relief that sea conditions are continuing to remain calm. That's largely because tomorrow through Thursday is when we will get neap tides. Um, during then, the speed of tidal currents are at their slowest and sea levels go down to their lowest. Now, uh, normally, speed of tidal currents were at about 2.8 meters per second, but during a neap tide, it should slow down to at most 1, 1 meters per second. Well, at the moment, uh, the sea temperature on Chindo is, uh, so, excuse me, it's about 13.1 degrees on Chindo with cloudy skies and it's beginning to look a bit misty. Now at the moment, sea temperature on Chindo is at about 11.9 degrees and waves are calm at 0 0.7 meters. Earlier today, wind speed went up to almost 9 meters per second, but that is gradually going down and at the moment that is down to 5.9 meters per second. Now on Tuesday, the best time to pick up speed for rescue operations would 
would be at these hours, since uh, this is when the speed of tidal currents will be at their slowest. As for weather conditions on Chindo for Tuesday, it should remain similar to today, with strong winds blowing at 5 to 8 meters per second, and waves will continue to remain calm at 0 0.5 to 1 meters. That's all the weather updates I have for Chindo at this hour, and back to you, Yusan. All right, thank you, Po Gyeong. And that's all we have for you this hour. Stay with us for more on day six of the sunken ferry search efforts on our next newscast in just about half an hour.